of six. Does this look like a sick man to you? No. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. The Fly is an American sci-fi horror film starring Jeff Goldblum. It's based on a short story by George Langelin and a 1958 movie of the same name. In true Kafka-esque fashion, the story follows a scientist, Seth Brundle, who turns into a hybrid fly creature after one of his experiments goes horribly wrong. In today's video, we'll look into the Brundle fly, how he transforms, what his powers are, and his physical traits. So be afraid, be very afraid, as we unravel this creature, a grotesque fusion of man and insect. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who is Brundlefly and what is his story? Seth Brundle, an eccentric scientist, has invented a device he calls telepods. These teleport things by disintegrating matter and then reintegrating it after it transmits. He meets Veronica Quaif, a reporter, at a party where he shows her his invention. Wanting to publish the story, she takes it to her ex-lover and boss, Stathis, who rejects it. He offers to let Veronica cover his story as long as she waits till he fixes it. In one such attempt, he transmits a baboon, which ends up inside out on the other side. These two start spending time together during these experiments and they fall in love. Inspired by one of their meetings, Seth figures out how to fix his machine. Veronica, on the other hand, runs into Stathis, who now wants to publish the story. Seth successfully puts another baboon through his device, and this one remains intact. They prepare to celebrate, but Veronica leaves to stop Stathis from publishing the story. Seth assumes she's getting back with him, and despite her, he teleports himself. The process is successful, but what he doesn't realize is that a fly is also in the telepod. Seth slowly starts to experience changes, both physically and mentally. Veronica tries to point that out to him, but he refuses to consider it. It's later revealed to us that because the fly was in the telepod, both he and the fly have been merged together as a single organism. He slowly transforms into a creature he calls the Brundlefly. In the end, he tries to fuse himself with Veronica and their unborn child so they can be a family. His plans are thwarted when Veronica escapes from the telepod and he ends up fusing with the machine. The film ends with her pulling the trigger after he begs her to kill him. What does Brundlefly look like? Brundlefly looks like a disfigured version of both a human and a fly. The use of body horror to generate disgust in the audience works perfectly with this character. He loses his human body slowly, one part after another. Brundlefly starts off with having insect hairs on his back. Other than the suddenly enhanced abilities he gains, this is the first sign of his transformation process. Soon he loses his hair, ears, teeth, and his fingernails. Towards the end, when the process is almost complete, he loses all his remaining skin and flesh. If there's one word I could use to describe him, it would be grotesque. He has a head that is elongated, his eyes are all large and black, and he has a small antennae between his eyes. Now if we take his hands, his left hand is just a stump with vestigial fingers, and his right hand looks like a claw. He has extra appendages too. In the end, his skin looks like it's been burnt, and his mouth is just a gaping hole. When he emerges from his exoskeleton, all that was Seth has been lost. He's just Brundlefly from then on. How does the transformation process work? The process of Seth's transformation starts with him gaining a few abilities. He wakes up feeling very energized and suddenly has great reflexes. He becomes very agile and strong and believes that the teleportation somehow enhanced his body. He now also has an increased sex drive and an affinity for sugar. It affects him mentally too. He starts getting uncharacteristically angry about things. The initial sight of his physical transformation is ruptured skin where hair grows out of it. Veronica tests these and lets him know that they are insect hairs. Slowly, he starts losing his nails and his ears. His legs are next. Now he has to use a cane as he walks with a limp. He believes he's slowly dying. He starts vomiting acid to eat his food. His voice changes and he no longer wears any clothes. The process is very slow and it completely deteriorates his body. Toward the end, when Veronica tries to free herself from him, the final process of the transformation begins. While escaping, she accidentally manages to rip off his jaw. Soon, he sheds the remaining human skin and reveals the body of an insect. His face, too, turns like a fly's head. The final stage is his fusing with the machine. He's now both metal and flesh. Now, all this must have been pretty hard to achieve. Jeff Goldblum spent multiple hours in his makeup chair to make all this happen. There were seven stages in which his transformation was broken down. Let's take a look at those quickly. 
Stages 1 and 2 are subtle, minor changes, starting with skin discoloration, which leads to lesions. There is a patch of fly hair growing from his back, and tiny hairs growing on his face. Stages 3 and 4 have prosthetics involved. These cover his face and body. He also has prosthetic teeth and wigs which have bald spots. Stage 4B is something that has been deleted from the film, where he's in a full body latex suit. Stage 5 is another body suit, this time with more deformities. In this stage, he also wears contacts to make one eye look bigger. Stage 6 is the transformation into the creature itself. This involves puppets controlled by rods and cables. The final stage 2 is a puppet, but this one is an injured Brundlefly who's been fused with the telepod. What happens to Brundle's organs? When he starts to deteriorate, Brundle starts storing the body parts that fall off in his medicine cabinet. He calls this the Brundle Museum of Natural History. Now, we don't exactly know what happens to his internal organs throughout this entire process. We can only speculate about the possibilities. We know that his organs have been altered irrevocably, but what changes they go through are still a mystery. The movie does not show what happens to him internally. Since he's still upright, we can make the assumption that his vertebra are still intact. Now, if we take his brain, it's pretty clear that he's acting irrational. But even though he's lost his rational thinking, he does seem to have it back at the end when he asks Veronica to kill him. He must still have a human skeletal and muscular structure to pull off the things that he does. As for his other organs, are they even human-like toward the end or insect-like? We don't know. What do you think? What are Brundlefly's powers and abilities? After his transformation, Brundlefly has enhanced reflexes. We see this when he wakes up the next day and seems to pluck a fly out of midair. Now, if you've tried catching one, you must know that it's incredibly hard to achieve. Assuming that he has the normal traits of a fly, he has enhanced senses like better smell and the ability to process things faster. He also has increased stamina, which we see when Veronica finds it hard to keep up with him. He now has super strength. This is evident when he breaks a man's wrist while arm wrestling. He has the ability to use his acid vomit and melt away people's parts, which he does to Stathis towards the end. Because of his sticky hands and feet, he's also able to scale walls. Another perk that he has as a result of his transformation is that he has little need for sleep. There are surely a lot of perks to his transformation if only it did not end up so grotesquely. How does Brundlefly eat? Brundlefly eats just like a fly does. After his transformation, he finds his teeth to be useless. Though he can chew his food, he cannot digest it anymore. Solid foods do not go well with him, so like a fly does, he breaks down these solids. For this, he uses corrosive enzymes that he calls vomit drop. He basically throws up on his food. It starts to liquefy and then he sucks it up to eat it. Fly stomach acid is not something that would work quickly on human food, but if we take his human size into account, it could very well make this stronger and more concentrated. We've also seen how he uses this to hurt people. Brundlefly also seems to have an affinity for sugar. He constantly keeps adding more and more sugar to his coffee, to the point where it's very noticeable to Veronica. How does Brundlefly communicate? Brundlefly tries to get Veronica into the machine, saying that they will be the ultimate family if she fuses with him, as her untainted humanity would stop his transformation. At this point, she tries to get away from him, and she ends up ripping off his jaw. This in turn triggers his transformation, as his skin starts falling off and he fully emerges as the creature. At this point, he loses his ability to talk to people. He can only make noises and grunt from then on. This is another sign that he's losing his human side and the creature is taking over. What makes this worse is the fusion of the telepod and the brundlefly. After this, he slowly starts to crawl toward Veronica from the machine. He holds the end of the gun she has and begs her to shoot him by holding it against his head. Veronica is devastated, but she does end up doing it and putting an end to his suffering. How does the transformation affect Brundle's mind? Before the transformation, Seth Brundle is shown as a brilliant man who's caring and calculating, albeit a little bit of an outcast. He's someone who was lonely, but he also had some charm to him. All this changes when he starts turning into Brundlefly. It starts off with him being very hyper and erratic. He's now more prone to getting angry. He starts behaving very uncharacteristically. When Veronica is unable to keep up with him, he believes that she too should put herself through the telepod so she can match his stamina. When she refuses, he calls her a drag and he throws her out of his place. He then goes on to seek a hooker instead. This is very much in contrast to how we know him, a caring and awkward man. He believes that his machine made him better, which makes him sound very egotistical. He's in denial about his condition throughout the process. When he finally checks his computer and discovers what happened, he starts to realize that he's losing himself slowly. He acknowledges that the fly part of him is starting to take control. This makes him more prone to acting on his primal instincts. This is also what causes him to kidnap Veronica from the hospital. 
All he wants at this point is to be more human. Toward the end, he does display that he at least has some humanity left when he asks for his death. Can Brundlefly reproduce? As we've already seen before, Brundel starts to crave sex way more than he did before his transformation. Soon, Veronica gets pregnant with his child. It's not revealed that the pregnancy happened before or after his transformation. Veronica starts to have nightmares about her unborn child. She's worried that the child too would be half human and half insect like Seth. In her nightmare, she gives birth to a maggot. After this, she wants an abortion. But Brundel, who overhears this, kidnaps her from the hospital and asks her to keep the child. The only thing that's left of his humanity. We don't know if she does at the end of the movie. Other versions were shot where she dreams that her unborn baby has a beautiful set of butterfly wings. The 1989 sequel The Fly 2 answers our question. In this, we see Veronica give birth to a larval sack. Immediately after this, she dies. The sack opens up to reveal a normal human boy who's raised by Anton Bartok, who's the owner of the company that finances Seth experiments. We later realize Martin, too, is like his father as he ages faster and is highly intellectual. He slowly starts transforming like his father, but in the end, unlike him, he's successfully restored to his human form. What are Brundlefly's weaknesses? Brundlefly loses his ability to talk. As he fully transforms, he's no longer able to communicate with people, which is definitely a weakness. As he evolves, he loses his human side, is more prone to anger and irrational decisions. Despite his transformation, he doesn't gain the ability to fly as he has no wings. He also seems to lack durability, and he can only avoid damage to himself by using his speed. With each stage of his transformation, his sanity is drained more and more. He starts off with just irrational anger, but towards the end, he's completely unhinged, expecting Veronica to agree to a fusion. His deteriorating mental state is his biggest weakness. He goes from being a super smart Nobel Prize winning scientist to a creature who resorts to his primal instincts. Does Brundlefly have a short lifespan? The Brundlefly is a creature that is a result of a fly's genetics being mixed with that of Seth Brundles. Flies do tend to have a short lifespan, so it's probably safe to assume that the creature does too. Through the course of the movie, we see how Brundle deteriorates more after he gets closer to his transformation into this creature. His mind starts to deteriorate, his body parts start falling off, and he already looks like he's in agony and close to death before the telepods are involved again. I'm pretty sure he only had a few days left to live at that point anyway. When the machine fuses with him, it makes his condition worse. Without the gunshot, we don't know if he would have lived more than a few hours. Marvelous verdict. With that guys, we come to the end of today's video. This story is a fusion of both body horror and tragedy. Throughout this process of transformation, Brendel has experienced many changes in both his behavior and his physical appearance. Most of this has been very grotesque. Which part of his transformation bothered you the most? If you were the one merging with an insect or an animal with no such side effects, which one would you pick? And why? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, do remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel on your way out. Thanks for watching.